right, I'm the Flight Rate Master. Today we're talking about what service riders do wrong. All right, so we gotta go for the low hanging fruit on, on this one, and that is waiters. Waiters are some of the stupidest ideas on the planet, unless you're staffed with a lot of GSs, like a tire store where you can just take as many waiters as you want. Waiters are a horrible idea for a productive shop. They just are. There's, there's no denying that. Pulling a tech off of a, you know, money making job to do an old waiter oil change is stupid. Pulling a waiter in to deal with, you know, oh, well, I'm going out of town in a, in, uh, tonight and I need an oil change before I go. Really? Happened many times. Oh, my check engine light came on. Bring it in. Well, oh, I'm going to wait. Okay. You know, waiter, I did a whole video on waiter diags. It, it, it's not a smart practice. You're, all you're doing is keeping one customer happy and pissing off probably several others because every time you bring in a waiter, it pushes something else if you don't have staff to handle that waiter. Just is. If you want to do waiters, you need to have staff to handle them. If you want to do waiter oil changes, make sure you have GSs to stand around, wait for those waiters to come in because, you know, Waiters are always reliable about showing up at their appointment time, right? I've, I've, I've ranted about waiters in other videos, so we're going to move on. Number two, complete lack of info, i.e. service riders just straight up not doing their job. Their job as a service rider is when they make the appointment, they get all the information about the customer's complaint. That means, you know, oh, I have an intermittent stalling issue. How many times did it happen? When did it happen? Where were you driving? What was going on? You know, getting all that information. Now, this is a huge problem I've had at the shop I used to work at. It just was a massive problem. Customer state stalling. When, where, what, if. Why was this ticket even distributed if you have zero information on the customer? I've even seen customers walk in, talk to the service writer, and there's literally no additional information just on what was on the appointment. You, you talk to the customer. Why do we not have information? Apparently, service writers think techs are just straight up mind readers. You know, we could connect telepathically with that customer or the car and figure out exactly what's wrong with it without any information. They forget part of their job is to talk to the customer and get information on their complaint, not just sales. They're supposed to be a service advisor, not a salesman. This one actually goes back to the waiter, but it also applies elsewhere. Pulling you off of tickets for another ticket. This one is one of those that it just, oh, oh, well, I, I, uh, I, I couldn't, uh, I need this one done right now. Well, you needed this one done too. You know, you always get the service rider to go, I, I, I gotta have this one done by, you know, this time. You told me that about this car. So which one do you want done? A lot of service riders have a huge problem understanding that, yeah, we might be a flat rate tech. Yeah, we can get stuff done pretty quick, but we're still limited by, you know, two hands. We can't work on two cars at once. And they expect miracles daily and then wonder why they're disappointed when it doesn't happen. And that one ties into this one, scheduling issues. This is something that way, way, way too many shops have problems with. One of the problems I used to have was a technician would be booked out for a couple days and they would book in a, another previous wreck on top of all that other work and then wonder why it didn't get done. I, I don't know what to tell you except schedule better. You have to figure out what's going on before you schedule in a big job with a technician that has other cars to work on. It, it should not be, oh, well, I promised this car today. Why would you do that? I have a car tour apart in both my bays. Really big problem with technicians with one bay and they have a car torn down because <laughs> that job ain't getting done until that car's back up and running out of that bay. And that was a common occurrence. There was a tech in the lower shop that would be literally four days old and they'd bring in more stuff on Wednesday 
and then wonder why that stuff got pushed back to the next week because, well, he didn't get it all done. And that brings me to number five, not understanding workflow. Available hours in a day. There's only so many of them. There's only so much we can do. You want all that work done, but you also want all those cars that also brought in to be checked out and the work done on those sold and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they just, they can't understand how shop workflow needs to work. They just, they, they can't. They just shove more cars in and it'll fix everything. Shove more cars in, that'll fix it. Oh, well, um, yeah, more cars. That's, that's literally not how it works. Just because you have plenty of cars to work on doesn't mean you get stuff done. In fact, especially if you've got big tickets going on, the more cars you have, the less stuff gets done. Especially when you're constantly pulling car behind a car to check it out so you can get it sold and then that sells and then you're, you're backed up even more. And then some techs have a real problem where they get overwhelmed by having too much work on their plate and they really slow down. I've seen that many times. They get, they just get, their mind just goes to that point where they just, they kind of just freeze up. A shop manager, shop foreman, service rider, when they get overwhelmed, all you can do is pr give them priorities, tell them not to worry about these cars, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, is most service riders want all the cars done. And that's just not possible. A lot of times service riders will promise stuff that cannot be done and get mad or upset at the technician when it doesn't get done because they overpromised. It's a huge problem. You know, you want 1,500 cars through the shop in a day, but you have a limited pool of, of techs. When stuff gets dropped, stuff doesn't get done, you get pissed. Honestly, in this business, I've never seen a service rider that knew how to schedule. There, there's, you know, the, the main method I've seen for way too long is just booking as many cars as you think is appropriate and hope it works right. And that's a horrible, horrible method. They don't understand workflow mentality. I mean, I've worked at, you know, I've worked at a bunch of shops and I've never seen a properly scheduled shop. Most shops just throw whatever they can at the techs and hope they make enough money. Other shops, you know, underestimate how many cars need to be coming in. Most shops don't even look at what they've got scheduled in to determine what they need to bring in. Oh, I've got 14 oil changes coming in on very late model cars. Probably not gonna sell a whole lot. Probably need to bring in more cars. That makes too much sense. Oh. I've got previous wrecks for a transmission, an engine, and I've got this. Oh, I need to bring in a bunch more Diag. You know, it's it, they never understand how ticket distribution really should be done. And that takes me to another one. Little to no training on that, on shop management for service riders. Most of the training for service riders or even shop management is about sales, is about getting your margin, is about getting X, Y, Z. It's not about how to properly schedule a shop. That's very niche content. Training is way less prevalent in this industry, even though it's way more important than a stupid margin number. You know, making sure your shop can effectively move as many cars through the shop as possible. That, that doesn't make sense to train on that. No, no, you need to train on how to make 60% margin on your parts. How to pay technicians less money. More cars through the shop more effectively? No, not doing that. Poor parts sourcing. Service riders, shop managers are so worried about parts margin that they're so concerned about making sure they sell it Dormin exists for a reason. They're probably the most popular parts sold in the country. If you look at inventory of any parts supplier, Dormin's probably your main choice. They've probably got the most in stock because they sell those the most. That's a bad thing. You know, margin already is a stupid concept to me. I know I'll get a lot of crap in the, in the, the comments for that, but 
margin is a stupid idea. Worrying about a 60% margin number instead of profit is stupid. You can sell a $20 part, make a 60% margin and make 30 bucks. Or you can sell a $60 part for 50% margin and make 60 bucks. I don't know why margin's so prevalent in, in this business that they're worried about a 60% margin when if you sell it at a more reasonable price at a higher price for a better part, you make more money instead of worrying about a parts margin. But I digress. Service riders are so worried about getting the car back to the customer as soon as possible. They source junk parts. They're so worried about parts margin that they, you know, source junk parts. So they make their margin number instead of worrying about, you know, actual profit. Poor at sourcing good parts. I mean, like I had a, a service rider that would first click on the on the screen is what he got. So you'd, get, you'd be putting an AC Delco timing kit on a Honda because it was the first one on the list. Poor part sourcing. Now, the last one is gonna be lack of proper communication especially on priorities. I had a huge problem with this at the shop where I'd have a bunch of cars, you know, we first had multiple service riders and I'd have a bunch of cars due that day. Well, I've gotten zero communication from any of them on which one out of those that I need to do first or second or third because of poor communication. I would have to go up there and go, I've got these cars. Which one's the highest priority for all you guys? I shouldn't have to do that. That's their job, not mine. I don't, you know, I know my workload, but I don't know the customer's priorities. And that was one of the other problems is they always never gave us an actual end date because we'd milk it. So we'd, you know, every, everything was due the same day, no matter what. And it was, you know, point, pointless to use our computer system because they didn't use it. So why, you know, who cares? Oh, it's due Friday. It's listed due today. Oh, well, you know, why do we have that feature if you're literally not going to use it? But that's a huge problem. Let's say a technician has multiple cars and he looks at his thing and, oh, that job I can knock out easy. That'll be, you know, six hours. Pull that in, starts tearing it down. Oh, no, 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 I need this car done first. That one down first. Got to put that car back together, pull it out, pull that other car, and he just wasted who knows how long because he didn't have that information. And that's a huge problem to workflow. <laughs> if you don't know which car to work on first, you're going to take whichever one you think needs to go first, and chances are you're going to be wrong to somebody. That is something that should be ingrained into service riders. You need to be communicating with your technicians about what cars you need back. Because we don't know. We are, again, not mind readers. So just something to think about if you're a service rider is communicate better about their priorities. Because technicians don't care which car they get done first. They just want them all done, but we can only do so much. So if you communicate, we might get the car you actually need out, out. As always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Raid Master.